Morning guys, today is a big day in the life of my 964. We're gonna do some fun things to it. Specifically on today's episode, we're gonna talk about how to put a 993 make break kit uh, and remove the, the current one that I have. Now the interesting part uh, about my car is it's a C4 if you didn't know, and C4s have a little bit of a different setup than a standard C2 in terms of their braking master cylinder. There's a few different things we'll talk about that. So uh, overall, the brakes are pretty good. Uh, but what's interesting now is if you do a little bit of math, put a from a 3.6 to a 3.8 so we're up about 20 25 percent horsepower uh i'm tracking it all the time so right there you're already putting a lot of pressure on it with every track day uh, i hope i'm getting better and better and that my times are showing that i'm getting better and better what does that mean that means i'm approaching corners i'm approaching turns much faster than i did before and when i do that i need more brakes so right at the end of my break uh, of my sessions i'm starting to get a little bit of not necessarily brake fade, but I'm getting, and all you Porsche files know, I'm getting a little bit of a shake uh, towards the end, which is uncomfortable. And it's not my tires, by the way, because uh, I thought it was. Uh, so we put the uh, the brake duck kit in, and that actually helped a lot. So now it's toward the end of the day, I'm starting to get a little bit of shake. So uh, as I progress and get faster and faster, I figured, you know what? Let's put the 993 big brake kit. I'm going to go up to speed sport tuning. I'm hopping on 684 right now. And uh, hopefully by the end of the day, we'll have those all set up. Brian's going to be our tech. But uh, another exciting day, and uh, I just love this machine. It's running really, really good. So that and more coming up on this episode of Ride Along. Well, I finally made it up here to Speed Sport Tuning in Danbury, Connecticut. And as you can see, I got my new 993 Big Red Kit right here. And in person, man, they are bigger than I thought. Uh, we got the car up on the lift. Everything's, uh, the wheels are coming off. I got Beans and Brian, of course, doing the work. But uh, it looks pretty spectacular. I want to give you a, a little overview. Uh, it's nice and clean now, and hopefully in the next couple of days at the track, it'll get uh, dirty. But we'll go in, we'll do step by step, and I'll show you the process of what Speed Sport's going to do today. And uh, pretty excited. All right, Brian, so we changed one side, and uh, before we changed the other side, I was looking at all the parts that you have out here, and the difference is massive. Now, Spencer said, the next thing you need to do is put the big brakes on, clearly because I went from a 3.6 to a 3.8, lots more power, so that means I'm approaching the corner faster than I would normally. So tell me, like, what kind of, am I gonna feel the difference with these brakes? It's gonna be a huge difference. Here's your old rotor compared to the new rotor. Oh my gosh, look at the size difference. It's a huge size difference. And then your calipers, here's old caliper, new caliper. I mean, they're like almost double yep. double the size. And brake pad to new brake pad. So it's at least 30, 40% more braking surface. Just, and then the dissipation, you know, the heat is gonna be able to go further, you know, You're, dissipate, right? It'll dissipate a lot faster. You can go into the turn a lot faster and brake later. So this is a tremendous know, upgrade. For someone who's going to the track yep. on a semi-regular basis. Right, yep, the last longer, the hats are replaceable. Instead of replacing the whole rotor, when it's time for new rotors, we'll just unbolt these, keep the old hats, and you're back on the track. So literally the only thing I'm changing is the metal here and my pads exactly. based on how much yep. track use I'm getting. Exactly. After removing all four wheels, Brian quickly disassembles the stock system by first removing the brake line and capping it. Notice he is using a specific 11 millimeter brake line wrench which makes it much easier to remove the tight flare nuts on brakes, fuel, and other lines. This will easily slip over the lines and prevent the rounding off of the nut. I later removed the brake line cap to film the super blue dripping and I forgot to put it back, so Brian made me clean the floor. <laughs> Next, the caliper is unbolted, and finally, the old rotor is removed. Of course, after heavy use, not every rotor comes off easily. Naturally, this is the case for us on the passenger side. Rotors normally stuck on the hubs from just corrosion, from just street driving, track driving, dirt. So, easiest way to get them off, get a couple bolts. So instead of taking like a sledgehammer to a very sensitive part of my car. Yep, so you know, beat the crap out of the hub. 
and screw these in here. And we'll work it off. Oh, so the, the bolt is pushing the... Yep. Ooh, nice. Okay, that's the easiest way to... Next, Brian does what he's known best for, and that, of course, is cleaning. He cleans every part before moving on to the next step, which in this case is pre-assembly or mocking up the fit of the new rotor to ensure it's secured properly. Because of its increased size, the backing plate guard lightly rubs the rotor, so Brian easily bends the sheet metal to allow the rotor to move freely. Now that we're sure everything fits nicely, he secures the rotor with three screws, then attaches the caliper with two bolts. Afterwards, it's time to reinstall the brake lines to the caliper. Then Brian cleans and of course cleans again. He does this because if brake fluid remains on the red caliper, it will corrode or fade the deep red color, which would be a huge bummer. Finally, Brian slides the new Pagid RS yellows into place. Okay, so we've done a couple of steps here. We've taken off the old stuff and we're putting the new stuff on, as you can see, but it's kind of mocked up at the moment. We're taking a little break and I asked Brian, I said, hey, I got a little bit of an issue. I've been, I painted these cup ones and we're not 100% sure if they're gonna fit. So I haven't picked them up and tested them. Brian's gonna do that right now. So I'm a little nervous because I, I wanna keep my cup ones for street wheels and 18s for the track. But uh, I don't know, this is the moment of truth. So Brian, give it a shot. Oh God, I'm nervous. Good. They fit? Yep. <laughs> That's actually true enthusiasm, man. I wanted to keep these so... Yep. Oh man. It's a mile. Because I, I stuck a, I, I measured it myself and I was like, oh, it's close. It's a mile. Oh, I get to keep the cup ones. Usually it's like uh, sticking a piece of paper through it. Oh. Brian repeats the same process on the rears and applies anti-seize on the hub so that the new rotor doesn't stick to it next time we replace them. As you'll notice, I've kept the same size rear rotor and assembly for one important reason, the e-brake. I live on a steep hill and my e-brake is a must for any dual purpose vehicle like mine. So keep that in mind for your project. Same as before, the caliper bolt is tightened to the carrier then he reconnects the brake lines, and I'm sure you know the next part. Much like before, slide in the packages and secure them. All right, Brian, looks like we are almost finished. The last step is to bleed the brakes, is that right? Yep, we're gonna bleed the brakes. We're gonna take the old super glue out and put the new SRF racing fluid in it. And that's gonna have, what, a higher? A higher boiling point. Okay, because I remember as a kid, I'd sit in my dad's truck or whatever and push the brake, push the brake, and okay, you know, whatever, that kind of thing. Are we doing that process? No, no. Or? To flush it out quick and get all the air out, we have a power bleeder, and we put that on top of the master cylinder, and we just... So that has around. pressure in it, and that's gonna mimic sort of the, exactly. otherwise we'd be there for like a mimics, day or whatever? Mimics the pressure of your foot. Okay, and then I think you were telling me before, since the, the, the fluid I have in there is blue mm -hmm. right now, and then we're putting in red, there's gonna be a, a change, you're gonna see blue, 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 then all of a sudden clear or whatever, then red coming out, and then you know you're kinda of good? Yep. That's exciting. All right, cool, let's do it. All right. Once the power bleeder is attached to the master cylinder with an airtight seal, pressure can be built by pumping the handle till just about 15 pounds is reached, which will force the new fluid through the system, pushing out the old super blue. Next, he attaches a brake bleed catch bottle to contain the old fluid as it's pushed out of the system. When the valve is open, air is released, forcing the super blue out of the system. After multiple bleeds, the color will change from dark blue to light blue and eventually to clear. The same step is repeated on the inside valve bleeder as each caliper has two of them and they both need to be bled. With the help of beans, Pumping and testing the brake pressure, Brian bleeds the brake fluid on each caliper multiple times until no super blue remains. Once the brakes are fully bled, Brian raises the car to change the clutch fluid 
which also uses brake fluid, from the Super Blue to, of course, the SRF for consistency, which for some reason makes me really, really happy. And remember, make sure you discard the old fluid properly. Finally, Brian slowly releases the compressed air, which allows the remaining unused new fluid to flow back into the power bleeder reservoir. All right, so we finished installing the Big Break 993 Big Break kit. Uh, Brian and Beans actually bled the whole system, and then they bled the clutch slave cylinder as well. Last thing that we have left is to take it outside and to bed the brake, so we're going to do that right now. So we're test driving the car and we have to bed the brakes. So Brian, explain to me what is bedding the brakes? What does that mean? Basically we're gonna match the pads to the rotors, so we're gonna go about 60 miles an hour and then uh, bring it down to like 30, 40 miles an hour, let it cool for 30 seconds, and then we're gonna do that 10 times, and then your brakes are bedded in. And bedding in, so it's basically just kind of breaking them in for lack of a better word. Exactly. Okay. How you get ammo t-shirt? Please wait! Exclamation point. 